All right, boys, welcome back. I've missed you. Let's get right into this position four tier list for 7.28. Starting with the items, I think you should be rushing an urn in all of your games, even before boots. It's so fucking strong. If you're a roamer, you're going to be getting kills. If you're laning, you're going to be getting kills. It's like it's like a bottle in the side lane, right? Also, you should be starting Oove because offlaners that start Oove are dog shit. So you should be getting it so he doesn't have to. Also, it's really great in tri lanes when you want to get first blood. Bracer's kind of been falling off. No one really buys it. It doesn't build into anything. What should I go instead? You should be buying a casual cloak. It's super good. You know the mid laner is going to be booking it for your ass. He's going to use all his spells on you. But wait, bitch, I have 15% resistance. Now you have a little bit of HP left. You cast your spells and your teammates kill him. It's great. You can build it into a glimmer cape. That item is insane right now. It's basically invincibility because no one buys enough detection. Speaking of invincibility, infused raindrops literally delete 100 damage off spells when they hit you. That's insane. Situationally, I would be buying a blade mail against like PA and Leshrac because they don't have enough HP to sustain their damage if they get it back. You could be buying a drums. You've heard me talk about this. If they have an undying or a phoenix, you need to be spam pinging the egg and the tome and you need to be pressing drums. Also, you should get a Vlad's if your teammates are greedy, not buying lifesteal. If you want a Roche with like a troll, an Ursa, a PA. If they have a Lycan and you just want to hopefully not die to him, get yourself a mech with the boys. And if they have a Morphling, Timber, DP, you know the drill, pick up a Vessel. Okay, for SSS plus tier heroes, first one is going to be Spirit Breaker. I fucking love Spirit Breaker, not only because he charges around and makes funny noises, but he is so good right now because of all the disable he has. All the safe lane carries have shit tons of damage. All you need is to be global and to stun people. Spirit Breaker does it all. If you like ganking, you will also like Earth Spirit. Now he's a bit harder to play, but here's a tip with Earth Spirit. You smoke, you go mid. Then you roll out from the trees while you're smoked, and before the enemy mid laner can react, you're already stunning him and on top of him. It is broken. Puck is a really good position for that you can be playing because of his ags and his ultimate. It literally counters all safe lane carries. Once they have BKB, they still can't do shit. Enigma. This hero is so easy. You just go into the off lane, you deny the creeps for your uh, position 3, and then you walk your happy ass to the jungle and start hitting the creeps. And make sure you stack the ancients for your teammates. Just in case you've been sleeping on it, in the patch 7.28, they made it so ancients actually take significant magic damage now. So you can stack the ancients not only for the hard carries like Sven and Anti-Mage and Troll, but you can get it for a Zeus, a Batrider, a Shadow Fiend. All of them can take the ancient stacks now. Nyx Assassin. This hero is so good at the vision game. Like, you're everywhere. If someone's farming, boom, they're going to stun themselves because you're going to carapace them. And it scales really good late game with items. On top of the fact that most mid laners don't even have a game against this guy, like Puck, Ember, Void Spirit, they just stun themselves and wish they hadn't picked that hero. And Nyx does do fuck all in the lane though, so you'll want to pair him with a ranged hero that can just right click people while you shake your ass in their face. Now, this one's a little controversial, so I want you to sit down for this, but I think Wind Ranger is fucking god tier because it is a free win every time you get your MKB if you don't get absolutely steamrolled. Which, it could happen, but it's that's not your problem, right? That wasn't your lane. You get your MKB, you walk your ass at the enemy carrier, you ult him, and he dies. Doesn't matter how many items he has. Getting into the A tier. These are the heroes that, they're kind of hard, you know, they're not as great as the S tier heroes, but they do their job. Io is fucking impossible. He's like the hardest hero in the game. And no one knows how to play with an Io. So if you pick Io, you're literally just handicapped by your teammates. Rushing a mech, though, does make you kind of invincible. And then you pair it with the Holy Locket. Mwah. Beautiful. You should play it. Marana is an insane hero because of her ultimate. Please take it at 6. And you use it. And it's literally a smoke of deceit. Off cooldown, you just go in, gank the enemy carry, get out, win the game. And if you're going to play her, please stop throwing random arrows as Marana. If you can't hit them, just walk your ass to the jungle and start arrowing big creeps. It's probably going to get more impact because you're going to have some items by the end of the game. 
Keeper of the Light has been changed so many times. No one knows what the fuck is going on with that hero. But here's what I do know. That new spell, where you put it on a target, they're literally crawling across the battlefield, glowing bright colors. Your teammates will see that, and they'll all attack the same target. It's really good for wrangling your teammates in solo queue. In the lane, make sure you just blast the enemy carry off cooldown with your first move. They won't have enough regen. They're probably going to blame their support for the fact that they're getting hit with Illuminate. And then you can just stack camps with your ranged attacks and your Q. Sometimes you can stack up to three camps. Your cores will love you. You'll love it because you're getting a shit ton of gold. And then you can buy an Ag Shard, heal the whole team. Or you can get an Ag Scepter and heroes will be flying all over the map. Elder Titan and Clockwork. They literally just body the enemy position 5. Like there's nothing they can do. And then once you win that lane, you go rotate and you win another lane. Clock dumpsters heroes with long cast animations, and ET dumpsters agility cores that don't buy armor items. Like TB, Morph, Naga, when ET has level 4 passive, those heroes will have zero armor. Even though Rubik looks like he has no room for a brain up there, he's like the 500 IQ position 4. He's really good at wave clear. Like, the W is insane. Also, it's like a mind game. You press W on their asses, and then they have reduced damage. Now, they're going to miss CS, they're going to get tilted, and you're just going to spam your little taunt while you're riding your broom like a cowboy. For all my aspiring Yapsors out there, the main thing you need to know about Rubik is you're not trying to steal the huge teamfight ultimate every single time. If you grab a nuke, then now you have two nukes and you can just split push and get a lot of farm. Or if you grab a stun, now you have two disables for the upcoming team fight. Next we got Phoenix. She is insane for pushing waves. You use your spirits, you can get Ag Shard, and you'll have infinite spirits. You take all the waves, you'll have them ready for the team fights. And then, remember, you can use Meteor Hammer while you're diving. So you can get long range tower damage, or you can get good stuns in team fights when they aren't even expecting it. Don't even get me started on Sunray. They could literally remove the other three spells, and people would call it a buff. They'd be like, oh yeah, now people know which spell they really need to be using in teamfights. Dark Willow is stylish as fuck. You pick Dark Willow when you want to get your blink, get your jewels, and solo kill anyone. Please, for the love of Jesus Christ, take your first move off of Quick Cast if you are playing Dark Willow. It's like every game, there's a level 22 Dark Willow player on Dota Plus, he picks that shit, and then he's fucking drunk, just throwing them all over the place. The enemy just walks in between. They just sidestep the Bramble Maze, and I'm sitting there like, you fucking suck. For the B tier, I would say these heroes are good. They're not griefing, right? But they're just not as good as the ones above them. So for Earthshaker and Tiny, these heroes literally don't do anything in the lane, and then... You don't know where to go, so maybe you gank mid, and you get a kill, okay, that means you get an early blink. If you don't get a kill, now you're getting a 20 minute blink dagger, the game's probably already over, and everyone is flaming you, and you probably feel like shit, because you've used your ult like one time, and you've killed one person as tiny. And I think we all know the feeling of playing tiny. Half your screen is on your teammate that you're trying to toss the enemy onto, so you can barely see the fact that you're walking into three enemy heroes, and then they just cast all their spells on you and your screen turns gray and you say, fuck my life. Also, if you're going to play ES, little pro tip, instead of just standing in the lane and doing fuck all, you should go to the jungle and stack camps, and then you could drag them together and ult and get a really fast blink timing. Next we have Leshrac and Sky. They both play pretty awfully from behind. The main thing with Lesh is that you need someone else in your lane to set up stun. If you have like a CK or Slardar, boom, it's double stun, you instantly get first blood, snowball the game. Sky, without an Eidos, you just kind of walk around and half health people and you think, well, what's my purpose? I would only pick Tree and Protector if your safe lane carry first picks Morphling and your mid laner second picks Alk. And you just have to stall out the game until hopefully someone gets an item before your teammates abandon. Shout out to my furries, aka League of Legends players. I would like to let you know that Hoodwink is not a good hero and her win rate is below 50% across the board. Not because people are bad, but because standing still for 5 seconds late game might not be the best option. And if that wasn't enough for you, maybe rushing Maelstrom on a position 4 every game while your offlaner gets absolutely owned and you're just waiting for him to die so you can take the last hits may not be the best strategy to win. However, that shit is fun as fuck, and I will continue to pick it on stream because I love the feeling of pissing the enemy team off. 
For all my degenerate and Volker players, you'll be happy to hear that you can pick this hero not only as a mid player, but when you're out of roll queue and you get four, you can pick it as a support. It's really good against all the cores right now. Like, imagine Wraith King, Sven, Troll, when they don't have mana, their heroes are really hard to play. However, Invoker's laning stage sucks dick, so you really need to pick them with a strong laner. I am 100% sure that all the Invoker players have already minimized my video, plugged their ears with some hardcore dubstep, and are queuing for position for Invoker right now. Getting into the C tier. You know, these are heroes that, if you want to play them, you are going to play them no matter what tier I said they were in. Bounty Hunter. I fucking hate Bounty Hunter players. This hero provides no disable. The only thing it's good at is Vision, which is not even as good as Nyx, right? Because Nyx is everywhere and he doesn't die. Bounty Hunter just walks up high grounds blind and then fucking feeds his brains out. Speaking of feed his brains out, let's talk about Lion and CM. These heroes are so bad at position 4s, because you give them some gold, and they still disintegrate when the enemy team just looks at them. Lion uses his ultimate, and then that's it. You get one use per game, because it's not going to come off cooldown until the next one. I don't know what propaganda people have been listening to that poisoned their minds into thinking Pangolier is any better than C tier. He sucks as a position 4. My teammate comes in straight off the rip. You know, he's, he's been smoking crack. He picks Pangolier. He's either first game is Pangolier or he's level 25 on the hero. I don't care which, because either way, he has no impact. He walks the lane. He swashbuckles in the wrong direction. Literally feeds first blood. The enemy support flames him in all chat. And then he tells me, sorry, bro. My main bounty hunter got banned. And then I just abandoned D tier is dog shit. It means don't pick it. Please, it's griefing. Please stop picking Undying 4. It is not a good hero. Please stop picking Pudge Position 4. I don't even have to say please. People are going to pick it no matter what. For all my Patrick Stars out there, if you're still picking Sniper Position 4, what rock are you living under? Like, when, even when people picked it, it wasn't even good. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like down below, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, and then comment down below which position for you hate the most. You know, they pick it and you go, fuck, we lost. Alright, that's gonna be it for me, guys.